Welcome to the final episode of How to Scare Musicians on Halloween. For this final jack-o'-lantern, I tried to come up with the scariest thing I could. Practice. More on that in a minute. First, we have to prep the pumpkin. So we're going to lay the design down on the pumpkin and try to make it as flat as possible or conform to the curve of the pumpkin as possible. And sometimes this means folding over the paper on the design so that it will lay along with the curve of the pumpkin. Once we do that, we're ready for the next step, which is scoring the design. So this is just going over the design with an X-Acto knife and um, cutting through the paper, but also putting a small line, uh, a small cut on the pumpkin as well that we will follow later to actually carve the pumpkin. And of course, be careful whenever you're working with uh, sharp instruments like X-Acto knives. And once we get that scored, we can take the paper off. And then all we have to do is um, take the top off and I'm scoring a line with that screwdriver uh, just as a guideline uh, for actually cutting out the top. So this gives us access to the inside and we can start carving the design just following along the score marks that we made uh, when we were cutting through the paper. And with a design like this that has letters, um, this can sometimes take a while depending on uh, how detailed or how complicated or how ornate uh, the lettering is. So just take your time and just follow the score lines that uh, you put down uh, when you are cutting through the paper in the beginning. So like I said in the beginning, this is the final episode in a three-part series of making scary pumpkins for musicians. Uh, this is uh, the, the scariest thing that I could think of for a musician is practice um, because sometimes it's great and sometimes it is the absolute worst. Um, and when it's good, it's good. And when it's bad, it can be real bad. I think everybody goes through a period of time where practicing is uh, not as productive as it used to be, it doesn't feel like you're making any progress, and it just n doesn't have the same kind of appeal like it did before. Um, but a lot of that is uh, going back to what you love about music, uh, going back to what originally got you interested in music, and I think that helps a lot um, to, to bring you back to a better place and, and a nice place to uh, continue um, on whatever had gotten you stuck. So if you're in one of those little ruts right now, just keep on working through it. Um, go back to what inspires you, and before long, you will be ready to hit the practice room again. So with an ornate piece like this, or a more complicated piece like this, um, there's only so much that the knife can do. And especially with this um, font, there was a lot of curves and little bendy bits in the letters. Um, and so with those, you can leave those for cleanup, like I'm doing here with a file. Uh, that's just a little needle file that I have that works fairly good on these foam pumpkins. And um, you can get files in different shapes. Uh, some have flat sides, some have curved sides, some are big, some are small. 
and they they really help in getting to some of those details that you can't really get to with a knife. So with the carving done, we're going to do just like the other jack-o'-lanterns. We're going to use a crumpled up piece of tissue paper as a backing to help diffuse the light from the inside and make it not so shiny. So what I'm doing is just putting some uh, craft glue on the inside of the pumpkin that we can stick this tissue paper to. And we just fold it up, stick it on the inside, and then gently press it with your fingers against the uh, glue that you brushed on. and it'll dry and it'll hold perfectly in place. This is the light fixture we're gonna use. It's just a small uh, low wattage LED lamp. So we have to drill a hole in the pumpkin to hold the light. And all I did was mark a little notch in the back as a reference point and then using this Forstner bit to drill the hole. Now it's time to plug it in and see how it looks. And here is the finished pumpkin. So one thing I didn't notice about um, this style of pumpkin before I started was um, I usually use like the, the, the rounder ones or the taller ones and this one's a little shorter and wider. So the, the ridges on the pumpkin are deeper so it was really hard to get the knife into um, in between the ridges in that um, the, the fold of the pumpkin and I don't know if it's just how they're made but these are a lot thicker like the wall the wall thickness of the uh, the pumpkin is thicker so it was a little harder to carve with the size uh, exacto knife that I use but I know that they make like a slightly bigger um, size of that same shape that triangle blade so I don't know if you had uh, the, the bigger version, if that would help. But um, this one took a lot longer because of the shape of the pumpkin and the uh, thickness of the walls. So that's the only thing that was really weird about this build. But I had a lot of fun making them. I loved how they turned out. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. And here are the rest of the pumpkins from the series. These three I made this year, and you can go rewatch any of those videos. And this one I made last year, but uh, I'm gonna be making the designs uh, for all four of these available on my Patreon uh, for my patrons as a PDF that you could download and um, try one for yourself. So if you wanna find out more about that, check out the Patreon link uh, below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a very happy and safe Halloween.